Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks again for joining me at WJMM 99.1 FM, Central Kentucky Christian Radio. Yesterday, in our episode, we dealt with the command of teaching one another, which is done from having the Word of Christ dwell richly and deeply within us. I also shared that preaching and teaching, while commanded and greatly needed, are not enough as we tend to do church today with folks simply showing up, giving a little of their time and money and little else in their walk with the Lord. The goal of the gospel that is to be taught is both salvation and sanctification, saving us from sin, death, and hell, and setting us apart to be holy, which is done through discipleship, which is why the word has to dwell deeply in us, and we must do more than just surface teaching. Now, if you want to go back and check that out, you can do that at wjmm.com. Click on the podcast tab and then the Love and Lordship links, and you'll get today's and the previous two days, which will actually take you back to our Family Foundation Friday from last week, of course, this being Tuesday. You can also find these and many more at loveandlordship.com. Love and Lordship, but spell it all out, love, A-N-D, Lordship. L-O-R-D-S-H-I-P there. If you're watching video, you can see it right there, but put A and D in place of the ampersand, right? A and D in place of that, and you'll find it. Hopefully that helps you who are listening, and you can listen to that and share it with others. And I'd love to connect with you. You can do that at love and lordship, once again, all together, loveandlordship at gmail.com. Thank you for those who have and for the encouragement and the questions and the challenges. I certainly appreciate that and look forward to to yours as well. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, yesterday's uh, one another was powerful, but it needs more than we tend to give it today. Uh, and, And that makes it a little more difficult. But when Jesus taught on discipleship, which when he said, this is the only way you have life, many of them turned and walked away. Dr. Vaudi Bauckham, one of my favorite contemporary authors and teachers, talks about not only what makes today's Christianity and church so milquetoast and weak, but why when he shares that most of our teaching are rooted in what he calls affective theology. So he not only shares that it is so, but why it is. He says that we practice an affective theology. This simply means that much if not most of our modern day church teaching is based entirely on how it affects us, how it makes us feel, and what we get from it. Not just how we receive it, but how many church leaders and pastors are presenting the gospel to keep people interested so they can attend, give, and serve. Literally means that we are crafting God or creating God and His Word and truth in our image. And unless you miss the effects of this, it's not good. Read Matthew 7, 21 through 23, which is written to people who claim they are believers in walking with the Lord. Just because we may not like God's word or commands, and none of us do in our flesh, let's be honest, that tell us how we are to love and what that requires of us, it doesn't mean we should accommodate it to fit our lives and pleasures. We should transform our minds actions and relationships to conform to his word of truth. I say all of this as a lead up to our recap of previous one another's that included forgive one another, speak or communicate to one another in songs and music and teaching. And then there's that nasty four letter word, submit to one another, obviously not a four letter word, but you get the idea. And humbly consider one another above yourself. How's that for some simple and easy to follow commands to help us truly love one another? I hope you're getting the idea and understanding why I led with Dr. Balkum's concept on affective theology and how we temper and redefine much of what we hear in scripture to fit what we like or what makes us feel good or we find pastors that are doing that with the word so that we can feel good. The Apostle Paul had a stern warning for us in Galatians 6, 7, and 8 to believers in what is commonly referred to as the law of the harvest. 
The reason is that once we begin to temper and twist God's truth to fit our desires, pleasures, concepts, and feelings, we are convinced we are still in His Word and will, and in living in His will, but are sorely and sadly mistaken and headed for destruction of some kind. Why? Because instead of God and His truth holding His right place in our minds, hearts, and lives, we have crafted Him and His Word in our image all the while claiming that we're walking in his truth and image. That's what Paul's saying. Don't deceive yourselves. God can't be mocked. So let's set aside we are, where we are coming from and what we would like and learn to take God at his word and trust him to follow through as he is always faithful, even when we are not. Check out 2 Timothy 2.13. This leads to another difficult but poignant and much needed one another offered again in the negative as what we are not to do or if we are, we are to stop doing so. As we prepare to hear this command, allow me to share something that will likely ruffle a few feathers as I'm going to challenge an iconic and classic TV show that I, I myself dearly love. And while it has some very good lessons Depending on your perspective, the lessons, as is so prevalent in our culture and even our churches today, are very relativistic. And as Dr. Bauckham has said, they're effective. They're, they're not holding to a truth. They're, how can I make everybody feel the best? I'm sure many of you, along with me, grew up with and or are still watching all the reruns of the Andy Griffith Show. Now, now don't, turn, don't turn off the radio dial, okay? or click off the podcast or the video. I won't go into a lot of detail, but to launch us into today's one another, let me ask two questions and you ponder them and let me know what you think. Love and Lordship at gmail.com. Number one, how did the show treat marriage? Think about it, go back and check it out. And number two, how often did characters, and in particular, the main character, Sheriff Andy Taylor, lie to Opie, Barney, Aunt B, and others just to keep the peace. And nearly every time it turned out wonderful, right? One of the things that happened in some of them was, well, not so much. It didn't always turn out right. But there were many times that we didn't see the resolve of that when, when the little white lie was told just to keep the peace. Now, with that said, today's command is, if you haven't guessed it yet, is don't lie to one another. Lying to others is a great dishonor to Christ and his word. However, it is not just outright speaking something that is untrue. Deception and embellishment are forms of lying that do not exhibit our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last week, some of last week's one another's encouraged us to ultimately place others above self. And we claim to do that when we tell the little white lie so they'll feel better. One of the ways we do this is to honor others, though, in what and how we share with them truthfully in word and deed. We are not to lie to, embellish, or deceive others or ourselves in any way if we are truly walking with and in Christ. I know it's not easy, but it's what we're called to. As I've already shared, the, the, a previous couple of one another's have been exceptionally powerful and good, even if they're not easy to follow through with because our flesh didn't really like them. That's why in all of these commands, positive or negative, we have to die to our flesh, our selfish desires, and what makes us feel good in that in order to make God first in all things and then place others above self, above me. This is the only way to consistently fulfill these various commands in which we truly love one another in Christ by daily putting on the new person that you are, that I am in Christ and becoming more like him. I can do this only by his grace and his Holy Spirit in me. And I can only receive the Spirit by surrendering and submitting by faith in Christ and allow his grace, truth, and love to fill me and then overflow to others to hear, to believe, to repent, to confess, to be obedient in baptism. The scripture clearly talks about these things so that I am Christ and have put on Christ and have been forgiven and the Holy Spirit can now dwell in me and does. 
and then overflow to others. As we continue, we find another negative here thing that I think that we far too often don't take seriously. Can anyone say Andy Griffith show? <laughs> In Colossians 3, 9, and 10, Paul exhorts us as believers, do not lie to e each other. There's an here's another ouch, if I'm honest, and I would imagine it has been the same in your life at some point, and maybe even now, if you're being straight up with yourself. This is not just about the tongue, but the mind and heart as well. What we tend to do is admit and work through the obvious blatant lies that we know everyone can find out or eventually will notice. However, God's word tells us that what is done in darkness, no matter how small, insignificant, or hidden we think it is, thus it's in darkness, will be brought to the light. Luke 12, 2 and 3. We have to remember this and continually lay our every motive, thought, and decision before the Lord and walk in His truth. Even the little white lies, the partial truths, which are not truth, that are told to gain advantage or avoid consequences or maybe help somebody feel a little better in the moment, even the prideful embellishment to make us look better in the sight of others all fall into this category of do not lie to each other. I, I know it's tough, <laughs> but that's why I can't do it in and of myself because that's where I'll go. But in Christ, we can do it. So let me ask, how are you doing when it comes to lying to others in any way, shape, or form or displaying his truth in every part of your life? Food for thought as we wrap up, Christ calls us to purity and integrity, shalom or wholeness in him, where every part of our lives line up with his truth. This is what the Holy Spirit through Paul is commanding us to do in this one another. Will you respond with the integrity that only comes from Christ? Four action items. You know the first two. If you're listening or you followed along on podcasts or videos, Spend time in his word and prayer daily. Read and study the scriptures in this message as a way to start. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit is this. Number three, what does lie, deception, embellishment conjure up in your mind? And number four, what do you need to do to make sure you are in no way deceiving yourself or others in order to honor Christ, yourself, and them? Let's live first to honor Christ, ourselves in Christ, and then others. That's how we are to love one another. More on this tomorrow. Join us and ask family, friends, and loved ones, even enemies, to, to join us as well so we can hear more of these truths and grow as Christ's disciples with Him as Savior and Lord. Remember, we're in our mid-year fundraising, so if you will, if you're praying and the Lord leads you, go to our website, loveandlordship.com love and lordship all spelled out and together dot com there's a give tab near the upper right if you if you feel led to click on that and in just a minute or so you can give once or ongoing and we greatly appreciate that to help us continue this and reach more and all donations are tax deductible you can also give uh, online or mobily through the cash app cash dot app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship all spelled out together and both l's are capital Thank you for joining us today, as always. Thanks for your prayers, and thanks always to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Now stay tuned immediately on, after this show, uh, program for Bill Reeser and Encounter. And then at 1245, check out my good friend Greg Horn, and hope is here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of